So in this session, we are going to discuss the pest management, how the pests are going to be managed. More specifically, we are going to discuss the microbial, we are going to discuss chemical, then uh, we are going to discuss the cultural waste, we are going to discuss the biological waste, we are going to discuss the mechanical and physical waste, and uh, behavioral waste by which we can manage the pest from the farm. So let us move towards the pest management. So uh, there are so many methods are there by which it is possible to manage the pest in the farm or the medic medicinal farm. The ways are, very first one is a mechanical way to manage the pest. Say for example, trapping is there. Then certain agriculture methods are available because so as to, it is possible to manage the pest from the farm. Then biological methods, then the chemical methods, then environmental methods, or it is also known as integrated pest management program, which is a modern way by which it is possible to manage the pest from the farm, the natural pest control agent, and the last one, that is the biopesticide and the bioinsecticide. So let us see one by one how these pests are going to be managed in the farm. So the very first one that is known as the mechanical method. So here itself name indicates that we, we are using certain uh, mechanical ways by which we are managing the pest in the farm. Which are those uh, mechanical ways? Say for example, hand picking is there. For example, pruning. For example, burning. For example, trapping. So hand picking it is something we are picking the pest but with the help of hand, isn't it? There is a certain uh, mechanical device is there, and with that particular device, it is possible to trap the pest. Similarly, pruning, burning. But in the case of burning, whatever the whole farm is there. A particular area it is going to be burned. So automatically the pests are going to be managed in the farm. Similarly, with the trapping. So we can use certain traps for the rodents in order to manage the rodents like mice in the farm. So there are different mechanical devices which are being used in the case of a mechanical methods to collect the pests and and furthermore, the collected pests are going to be destroyed. So hand picking, pruning, burning, and trapping of the pests are the mechanical methods by which eggs, larva, pipi, then the insects are being collected and destroyed suitably. If there are concrete warehouses are there, uh, we have to suppose to use the metal reinforcement corner on the window frame so as to it is possible to protect the material which is being stored in the concrete warehouses from the rodent like rats. Then furthermore, device for trapping the rats and mouse can also be used to manage the rats and mouse. Furthermore, it is possible to use the flavored attractants. There are certain flavored attractants are, which are available in the market. We have to suppose to sto store the flavored attractant in the device. So automatically some of the insects, some of the pests, they are going to be attracted towards particular flavor and they are going to be trapped into the device. So flavored attractants, which are being prepared by mixing the rose oil, anise oil with the sawdust are placed in a funnel shaped container for trapping the flying insects, which easily enters the trap, but could not come out, right? And the last one, that is the tilling. Tilling is a kind of, one kind of the mechanical device uh, which, which is being used to remove the bees from the farm. So I have shown here the image related with the flavored attractants and the tilling. How the tilling is carried out to remove the bees from the farm. So uh, bees, it is a kind of pest, isn't it? More than 50% of damage we are getting from the Beads, isn't it? Then the flavored attractant, see the funnel like apparatus is there, isn't it? And, and in the uh, whatever the container is there, some kind of flavors uh, we have to suppose to store. So, automatically, the insects or the pests 
they are going to be attracted towards the specific smell and going to be trapped into the bee hives. Furthermore, the pruning is there. So pruning, uh, in the case of pruning, uh, we, we, are, we, are, we are going for the cutting of the plant, isn't it? That is known as the pruning. Say might be the, that particular part, it is uh, infected with the pet. So removal of the uh, plant part can be helpful to control the pest from the farm. Then the rodent trap, it is a, here I have shown the kind of rodent trap, so which is going to trap the certain ro uh, rodents, like uh, say for example, mouse and rat, then the burning, burning of the farm, which will completely remove the, some of the pests from the farm. Then hand picking, it is a yet another methodology, which will help us to remove the pests from the farm. And last one, that is the insect trap. So, which will be helpful to remove certain kinds of the insects from the farm. So, these are the, some of the mechanical ways by which it is possible to manage the pests in the medicinal farm, like a hand picking, pruning, burning, rodent trap, insect trap, then the tilling and the flavored attractive. So these are the mechanical ways by which it is possible to control the pests in the farm. Okay, so this is about the mechanical method. Let us move towards the agricultural method. There is the innovation, modernization in the technology with the same way the agricultural field it is going to be grown. And we have the yet another option to control the pests that is known as the agricultural method. So in the agricultural method involve the advanced technique of plant breeding, which produces pest resistant pests by genetic manipulation. We are going for the certain genetic, genetic manipulation. We are changing the genetic makeup of the plant and whatever plant we are getting, which is resistant towards the particular pest. And furthermore, the pests are going to be managed well. It, we have the options to go for the hybrid varieties, which are resistant to fungal and the bacterial attacks and have also been produced by the, these advanced technologies. Yet another technique which is available with us, that is the, uh, known as the systemic insecticides, we can use, we can apply, which get absorbed by the plant through the roots and reaches the leaves to dissipate the foliage portion for the insect. See the nearby image. So we have to suppose to apply certain insecticides, which are going to be absorbed, absorbed through the roots and they are going to be reached into the, into the leaves as well as flowers and automatically the insects are going to be managed or pests are going to be managed. So in the case of agricultural method, we are going for, we are preparing the plants, uh, which is having a genetic makeup, which is resistant towards particular uh, pest. Or we are going for the hybrid varieties, which are resistant to the fungal or the bacterial attack. Or we are using the systemic insecticides, which is going to be absorbed through the roots and these are going to be reached into the leaves as well as flowers and the pests are going to be managed, right? So this is the advanced, this is the agricultural, one of the advanced agricultural method which is going to be used for the management of the pests in the farm or the medicinal farm, right? So this is the second technique. The first technique which we have seen, that is the mechanical method. Second method that is known as the agricultural method, right? Third method, that is the biological method. So in the case of biological method, which involves the combating the pests, insects, especially with the other living organisms. There are some, uh, see, uh, we are dependent on the each other for our food. Isn't it? Say, for example, uh, we are dependent on the, on the crops for our food. Furthermore, we are dependent on the certain animals for our food. 
similarly certain animals insects they are dependent on the on the other animals or the other insect so same concept has been utilized for the management of pests in the farm that is known as the biological method so biological method involves the combating the pests insects specially with the other living organism that is the often parasites if properly designed the pest control method proves to be effective safe and economic some of the female insect producers and release the sex pheromone a chemical substance which induces the sexual response in the male insect for example 7842 methylo tadecan from gypsy moth can be used for controlling the pest so automatically the insect cycle it is going to be altered another approach involves using the australian lady batter that is the ladybug which i have shown uh, in the image to eat the cottony cushion scale insect on a citrus crop then rat terriers to eat the rats then various birds to eat the insect pest this is a yet another approach and the larger harmful insects are often destroyed by the hatching the eggs of certain types of flies and the bats so this is known as the biological method we can use there are two ways are there uh, many more ways are there but here uh, the things which are given uh, by we, we can use the certain uh, pheromone that is the sex pheromone uh, in order to alter the cycle of insects isn't it so automatically the pest it is going to be managed yet another approach is that it is possible to use the certain ladybugs to eat the cottony cushion scale which is uh, on the citrus crop then the rat terriers to eat the rat then various birds to eat the insect pest and uh, if there are certain larger harmful insects are there which are being destroyed by hatching the eggs of certain types of flies and bats so this is about the biological method let us move towards the chemical method so as you know in the case of chemical methods uh, we are going for the rodenticides insecticides acaricides then fungicides and herbicides isn't it so it is possible to manage the specific type of pest in the farm so it involves the controlling pest by using the chemical pesticide like insecticide fungicide herbicide and the rodenticide rodenticide which are going to control the rodents then the herbicides which are going to control the weeds then fungicides which are going to control the fungi then insecticides which are going to control the insects the very first one that is the rodenticides for example warfarin then uh, spicinin arsenic trioxide thallium sulfate red squill these are the some of the rodenticides which are being used to control the pest used to manage the pest in the farm as well as the warehouse then the insecticide you may know about the ddt right then the gamaxin methoxychlor then parathion malathion sodium arsenate pyrethroid rotenoid and the carbamate these are the some of the insecticides which are being used in the farm to manage the certain insects right then the acaricides these are also known as the miticides for example tetradiphon and the chlorobenzylate then fungicides like a bordeaux mixture then chlorophenols certain antibiotics and the quaternary ammonium compound which are being used to manage the fungi in the farm then herbicides for example 2,4 dry chlorophenoxy acetic acid then calcium arsenate and sulfuric acid these are being used in the in the farm as a herbicide so these are the chemical ways or chemical cells which are being used to manage the pest isn't it we are using the rodenticides insecticides then the miticides fungicides and the herbicide okay let us move towards the the next method that is known as the environmental method so in the case of uh, environmental method we are using certain uh, uh, environmental ways to manage the pests 
in the farm and these are more effective in the in controlling the pest so by using the multifaceted control procedure selectively and carefully resistant development effect on non target organism and the environmental damage can be reduced if we can go for the environmental methods to manage the pest this technique of integrated control demands to knowledge of ecological principles and of the life history and population dynamic of the pest so we are considering here the population dynamic of the pest and certain ecological principle which will help us to manage the pest from the bee so here altering the environmental condition under which the pests are prevailing is the yet another approach suppose that the pests are going to be grown in a particular environment so we have to suppose to alter the the environment so automatically these pests are going to be managed well it is brought about either by eradicating the food supply to the particular pest or by obstructing their life cycle there are two things are important things are there in the environmental methods that is one way either to eradicate the food supply to particular pest or obstruct their life cycle for example mosquito larvae in the water can be killed by spreading an oil layer so automatically the oil layer which is formed on the water which prevents the growth of the mosquitoes isn't it right there is a formation of a thin film on the surface of the water right so this is the environmental methods to control the pests in the farm let us move towards the next method that is known as a natural pest control agent there are certain uh, natural pest controlling agents are there which are being used to control the pest in the farm say for example neem leaves isn't it there are certain products are there which are available in the market which are being prepared by using the neem there are certain products which are available in the market which are being prepared by using the onion or which are being prepared by using the eucalyptus which are being prepared by using the tobacco leaf the very first one that is a leaf tobacco as you know uh, it is available the leaves of nicotiana tobacum which gives the tobacco and tobacco contains the nicotine right tobacco mainly contains the nicotine so nicotine it is an uh, insecticide it is having a insecticidal property so by taking advantage of that it is possible to use the leaves of the tobacco for controlling the pest in the farm it is also being furthermore used as the fumigant being a contact poison it is effectively used as soap which is being used in the form of soap like a laureate oleate or the naphthalenate form of the nicotine soap solution of nicotine decomposes the sulfate into free alkaloid which produces the more toxic effect to the insect furthermore this nicotine it is going to act as a stomach poison along with the bentonite if we can use the nicotine along with the bentonite uh, it is going to act as a stomach poison to the insect 40% of nicotine sulfate solution that is a black leaf putty is a toxic to aphids and its toxicity increasing on alkalizing this solution i have shown the image of the nicotine i have shown the image of the tobacco leaf so tobacco leaf which contains a nicotine if we are preparing the soaps of nicotine by using the laureate oleate or naphthalenate form which is going to be act as a insecticide so this is about the leaf tobacco the natural pest control agent yet another that is known as the pyrethrum flower i have shown the image of the pyrethrum flower which contains the pyrethrin general structure of the pyrethrin i have shown on the slide so these are the dried flower heads of the chrysanthemum cineraria polium or chrysanthemum mars halli of the family composite 0.5% of total pyrethrin that is the pyrethrin 1 and 2 constitutes the pyrethrum so pyrethrum contains the pyrethrin in the form of pyrethrin 1 and pyrethrin 2 so pyrethrum obtains its insecticidal property from the pyrethrin 1 and pyrethrin 2 and 
cinerin 1 and cinerin 2 there is yet another two chemicals which are present in the pyrethrum flower that is known as the cinerin 1 and cinerin 2 means mainly the pyrethrins which are responsible for its uh, insecticidal property so there are four complex esters of the cristathemum carboxylic acid and monomethyl esters of the cristathemum dicarboxylic acid with the pyrethrolone and the cinerolone the pyrethroids or vitroids like uh, alethrin pyrethrin then cyclethrin are the synthetic compounds of a structure similar to that of pyrethrin there are certain uh, pyrethrins which are the natural one but there are certain synthetic moieties which are available in the market like uh, alethrins then the pyrethrins then cyclethrins uh, which are going to uh, which are also going to be act as a pesticide so this is about the pyrethrum flower from the natural uh, pest controlling agent right then the next one uh, that is the teris and the longocarpus this is yet another so see the images so that you will understood so here we are using the root which is uh, being furthermore uh, converted into the powder and the chemical constituent rotinone which is shown on the slide which is being extracted which is being extracted from the these roots so the roots of several species of the teris and uh, longocarpus which is belonging to family leguminosae possesses the insecticidal activity the powder root mixed with the water with the organic solvents like ethylene dichloride trichloroethylene or chlorobenzene are sprayed over the plant species in order to control the pest the extracts of the rotinone that is the root of uh, barbasco or cubi prepared with the oil or emulsifying agent and extracts dissolved in a paraffin oil are effective household and uh, cattle spray so this is about the teris and the longocarpus then rhina see the structure of the rhinodine which is uh, shown so here in the rhinia the roots and the stems of rhinia speciosa contains approximately 0 0.16 to 0.2 percent of insecticidal alkaloid that is known as the rhinodine this is the belonging to the category alkaloid is a complex ester having a one pyrrole carboxylic acid and this plant is used for controlling various lepidopterous larvae which attacks the fruit so here in the case of uh, rhinia we are using the roots and stems see the image which i have shown on the slide and the uh, chief alkaloid which is present that is the rhinodine it is uh, going to be used to control the pest in the farm so this is the natural pest control agent let us move towards the bio pesticides and the bio insecticide so itself name indicate that see here we are using the term bio what it stands for either it is having a source from a natural right or maybe it is having a source from certain uh, microbes isn't it that's why here we are using the word bio isn't it which is having a low toxicity than that of the synthetic pesticide than that of the synthetic pesticide which is being termed as a bio pesticide or the bio insecticide which are going to kill the insect or the certain pest so bio pesticides are naturally occurring substances of living organism that is natural enemies or their products that is the microbial products and the phytoconstituents or by products that is a semiochemical that can control the pest by non toxic mechanism so mainly in the case of bio pesticides or the bio insecticides these are the naturally occurring substances obtained from the living organism or the products of living organism say for example microbial products or the phytochemicals or by products that is a semiochemicals that can control the pest by non toxic mechanism no doubt we can't say 
whatever the mechanism is there, whether it's a toxic or non-toxic, but we are considering it as a non-toxic and it should be ensured. They cover a wide range of microbial pesticides and biochemicals obtained from the microorganisms and natural sources. Traditionally, biopesticides have been associated with the biological control and by implication, the manipulation of living organisms. So with this brief introduction to the biopesticides or the bioinsecticides, let us move towards the, what are the ad different advantages of the biopesticides and the bioinsecticides. So biopesticides are inherently less harmful. As I have said that they show the low toxicity or these are the less toxic material and, and cause less environmental load or pollution as compared to the chemical pesticides. When we are going for the chemical pesticides, they have the sudden environmental issues. They are going to pollute the water. They are going to pollute the air, isn't it? And create certain problems. In contrast to that, the biopesticides or the bioinsecticides, they are less harmful, less toxic, and, and they show the less environmental load or the pollution. They are designed for the specific pest or a few target pests as opposed to chemical having a broad spectrum of activity. When we are using the chemical pesticides, these are from the general category. Any kind of infection is there. It, it is uh, any kind of pest attack is there. We can use the broad spectrum chemical pesticide. But whatever the biopesticides or the bioinsecticides are there, they are designed in a such a way that they are prepared in a such way that they have the specific target. Isn't it? So this is the second advantage. Then the cost of their development is significantly lower than that of the synthetic chemical pesticide. Maybe the, the cost of synthetic chemical pesticide, it is a much, much more than that of the biopesticide or the bioinsecticide. Say, for example, take an example of the uh, preparation of biopesticide by using a neem leaf. Definitely, the cost incurred on the development, which is very, very low, as when we are comparing the thing with respect to the chemical pesticide. Their nature of control is preventive and their effects on flower is less because flowers are responsible for the pollination and further growth of plant, isn't it? So they have the less effect on the flower. So these are the certain advantages of the biopesticides and the bioinsecticides. Let us move towards the disadvantages of the biopesticides and the bioinsecticides. Very first thing is that I have said that they are designed for specific tasks. So it is not possible to use uh, it, it, it as a uh, general class of the pesticide, isn't it? So due to their high specificity, it is necessary to identify the exact target phase or the pathogen. If our farm is having a, having a X type of pest and we are, we are using certain other class of the biopesticide, it is not going to be useful. We have to suppose to find out the particular or specific pest for, the, we have to suppose to search this or develop the specific bioinsecticide or specific biopesticide for the particular pest. Due to their slow speed of action, they are often unsuitable if there is an immediate pest outbreak that becomes a threat to crop. Suppose that if there is an immediate outbreak due to certain reason, so many pests are released into the farm. So if there is an outbreak, it is not possible to control such outbreak by using the biopesticides and the bioinsecticides. And in such cases, we have to suppose to use the chemical pesticides. The biopesticides or bioinsecticides are not useful in these cases. They are not suitable for the standalone treatment and should have to be with a compatible method for high efficiency. Living organisms evolve and increase their resistance to biological, chemical, physical, and any other form of control. No doubt, we are using, if we are going for the biopesticides, bioinsecticides, or the chemical pesticides, as you know that the living organisms having the ability to develop a resistance like COVID-19 treatment and so on. So same way, all these pests are going to uh, resist the particular 
biopesticide or the insecticide that is yet another challenge when we are using when we are going for the biopesticide or the bio insecticide let us move towards the types of biopesticides and the bio insecticide there are four types of the biopesticides and bio insecticides are there very first category that is known as a microbial pesticide second category that is the pips that is plant incorporated protectants then third one that is the biochemical pesticides and fourth one that is the biotic agents that is the parasitoids and the predator let's move towards the microbial pesticide it is possible to use the microorganisms as a pesticide we can see it as a living organism so furthermore these microbial pesticides are classified as the bacteria then viral fungal protozoal and uh, nematodes so these pesticides consist of the microorganism such as the bacterium virus fungus and protozoa as a active ingredient and are used for the biological control of a plant pathogen then pestiferous insects and here we are using the microorganisms as a active ingredient and which is going to control the plant pathogen pestiferous insects as well as the weeds in the medicinal plant farm the insect pathogenic bacterium that is a bacillus thuringiensis that is a bt is the most commonly used microorganism in a bio pesticide development generally we are using the bacillus thuringiensis that is a bt for the development of the microbial pesticide this bacterium serve as insecticide for most of the lepidoptera then coleoptera and the diptera right it produces that is the bt it produces the protein crystals or the toxin during the spore formation of the bacterium that can cause the lysis of gut cells when consumed by specific or susceptible insect so the, when the bt it is being consumed there might be uh, chances of lysis of the gut cell and that is responsible for the death of the insect or the specific pest so this is about the microbial pesticide moving towards the next type that is known as the biochemical or the herbal pesticide as you know that it is possible to use the various herbs as the pesticide they are having a capacity to control the growth of the pests in the farm so these pesticides are naturally occurring and are used for controlling the pests to a non toxic mechanism we don't know whether whatever the mechanism underlined uh, for the herb whether it is a toxic or non toxic but it is presumed that it is going to act as a pesticide by non toxic mechanism plant producing the secondary metabolites are also being considered as the bio pesticide there are certain herbs are there and uh, they are going to produce certain secondary metabolites and that could be used as a pesticide also for example neem leaves onion garlic eucalyptus and chrysanthemum flowers and so on so these are the some of the herbal pesticide which are being used in for the control of the pest in the farm then the next type that is known as a plant incorporated protectant it is also known as the pip so what are the pips to so pips that the plant incorporated protectants these are the genetically modified crop we are modifying the genetics of the plant and that could act as a pest, uh, pest controlling way in the farm so they are bio pesticidal substances produced by the plants from the genetic material added or incorporated into their genetic makeup whatever the genetic makeup of the plant is there which is being changed isn't it and during the growth of these plants they are going to generate certain bio pesticidal substances and that could be act as a 
act to control the pest in the farm. So use of Bt protein to develop the PIP in a genetic engineering process is a common example. So Bt toxin is a host specific and can cause a death within a period of 48 hours. Bt toxin, furthermore, it is a safe for the beneficial organism. It is safe to human beings. It is safe to environment and safe to vertebrates. So PIP, it is a yet another way. It is possible to manage the pest in the farm. Then the next uh, type that is known as the semiochemical. So these are the certain chemicals which are being uh, uh, produced by the certain species, isn't it? Certain insects. So these are the chemical signals produced by an organism, usually insects, which can cause a behavioral change in an individual of the same or a different species. There are certain insects are there. They are going to produce certain uh, chemicals. They are going to act as the chemical signals uh, for the certain insects from the same category. So the insect pheromones are the most commonly used semiochemicals for the crop rotation. They serve as a signal to communicate with others in their species. Right? So automatically, there might be the behavioral changes in the other insects. And furthermore, it is going to be controlled. So they are synthesized for the pest control by mating disruption, then urea and kill systems, and mass trapping. So this is about the semiochemical. Moving towards how these uh, biopesticides or bioinsecticides they are going to act. So let us see the mechanisms by which the biopesticides and bioinsecticides are going to act as a pest. There are four mechanisms are there. That is the antibiosis, then the competition, then the hyperparasitism and the synergism. So in the case of antibiosis, uh, here in this mechanism occurs when biopesticide interact with the other microorganism under the influence of specific microbial metabolite, volatile compounds, lytic enzymes or other toxic substances. And the microorganism produces the antibiotics, bacteriocin, volatile compounds, and the metabolites, and that could act as a pest controlling tree. Then the yet another mechanism is that which is being suggested that is the competition. So in the case of competition, biopesticide aggressively compete to grow rapidly and colonize substrate to exclude pathogens. Suppose that the pathogen it is going to be grown on the crop. So whatever the other living organism or biopesticide which is uh, spread uh, on the crop, it is going to be grown very rapidly than the pathogenic material, than the pathogenic organism, isn't it? And due to competition, the pest it is going to be managed. Then the third mechanism that is known as uh, hyperparasitism. So this mechanism is a lysis of the death by other microorganism or the direct parasitism. For example, T. lignorum parasitized the hypi of the R. solani and therefore soil inoculation with the trichoderma spore control the damping of this death in the citrus city. Yet another mechanism is there that is known as a synergism. So in this mechanism, uh, the ability of some bioagents to combine actions of hydrolytic enzymes and the antibiotic secondary metabolite means they are going to act synergistically. So these are the four mechanisms by which these biopesticides or the bioinsecticides are going to act. Moving towards how the these uh, pest controlling agents are going to be applied or used. So pest can be effectively controlled by selecting suitable application method or a technique and an appropriate time and or the frequency of biopesticide application. These things should be considered during the application of the biopesticides or the bioinsecticide. There, there are three application ways are there. Very first one, that is the treatment to seed. Second, that is the foliar application. And third one, that is a seedling DP. So in the case of seed treatment, this means the application of biopesticides on the seeds. Generally, 
the powder, the bio pesticide, which are going to be applied onto the seeds. So this method is the most effective and powder formulations are applied on the seeds by tumbling them with the product designed to adhere to the seed. So whatever the powder formulation is there, powder, the bio pesticide is there, it is going to be attached to the seed. The yet another second method of application that is known as the foliar application. So this means the application of bio pesticide on the surface of leaves in the form of sprays. So whatever bio pesticide is there, we have to suppose to prepare the solution and it should be sprayed on the crop. So it is going to be deposited on the leaves. For example, application of bee subtilis to bean leaves reduce the occurrence of bean rust caused by the Euromyces fasciole. Then the third application way that is known as the seedling DP. So in this method, simply whatever whole crop is there, root part, it is going to be deep into the biopesticidal solution. So in this method, roots of the seedlings are deep in the biopesticide solutions or suspensions for a few minutes or hours before transplanting. For example, trichoderma species are applied in this way. So these are the, some of the application ways for the biopesticides and the bioinsecticide, that is the seed treatment, foliar application, and uh, seedling DP. So, in the case of seed treatment, we are applying the powder formulation onto the seed. In the case of foliar application, whatever the biopesticidal solution or suspension is there, it is sprayed onto the crop. So, the things are going to be deposited on leaf and the uh, seedling DP, whatever whole crop is there, the root part. It is deep into the suspension of the biopesticide or the bioinsecticide solution, right? So this is about the application of biopesticide and the bioinsecticide. Moving towards the common biopesticides used in, available in India. So there are here I have cited taken only the four, but many more uh, things are available. That is the very first one. There is a neem three hundred ppm. Neem 1500 ppm, then Bacillus thuringiensis and pheromone straps. So these uh, common biopesticides which are available in India. Let us see a few of the examples of these uh, biopesticides and uh, bioinsecticides. For example, trichoderma as a nematode inhibitor, fungicide and plant growth promoter. Then compounds like a cineol, geraniol, then uh, piperidine found in a bay leaves repellent properties towards cockroaches. Then citrus orantium, which comprises the limonin, subject to adult bean bubbles. Then essential oil of Artemisia, it is a repellent activity against the polyoptera. So these are some common examples. Let us see the harmful effect of the chemical pesticide. So here I have given uh, around approximately six examples of the some of the incidences and, and uh, as an example uh, related with the harmful effect of the chemical pesticide or the synthetic pesticide. If you can see the agent orange, which is being used in the Vietnam War, so which comprises the dioxin and that is the herbicide mixture, isn't it? Then endosulfan, approximately 1,000 people killed and 100 were born defective in the Kerala. There is one incident related to endosulfan, use of endosulfan on the crops, and more than 1,000 people killed and more than 100 were born as a defective in the Kerala. Then the monoprotophos or highly toxic organophosphates, which are being discontinued in the USA, but still it is used in India. Then organochlorates, they are going to produce the kidney damage for the more cancer, and uh, they are going to contaminate the groundwater. Then weed killer glyphosate, that is the Roundup is there. Again, it is a toxic. Then uh, neonicotinoids, polyntrus like the bees and butterflies. So these are the, some of the harmful effects related with the synthetic and the chemical pesticides. Moving towards some of the synthetic uh, pesticides and uh, 
their mechanisms so very first one organochlorides like uh, ddt then uh, chlorine they are going to act by nervous system stimulation and convulsion then organophosphates like uh, bromophores then melathion by paralyzing bronco construction and uh, muscle weakness then pyrethrin class that is pyrethrin 1 2 by seizure and uh, affecting nervous system and uh, rodenticides for example warfarin strychnine prevent the blood flow so here we we have finished the pest and pest management so in this session we have discussed the pest management various ways of the pest management various methods for the pest management we have discussed the mechanical methods agricultural methods biological methods chemical methods environmental methods or integrated pest management program the natural pest control agents and lastly we have discussed the bio pesticides and bio insecticides along with the hazardous effect of the synthetic pesticides and their mode of action along with the example so here we uh, we have finished the chapter biodynamic agriculture